Hi everybody, Ryan Balangi back here, and we are doing a driver review. And we are doing a Titleist driver review. A um, little story before we get into talking about the TS2s and TS3s. The last time I tried to hit a Titleist driver was when the 917 drivers came out. And I remember standing on the range at my golf club, Argyle Country Club, and our head pro, Kevin Taylor, pro's pro, great guy, Titleist guy through and through. He got the fitting card in, he got all the, the demos, the shafts, the heads, everything. And he gets us on the range and gets out of SkyTrack and is just excited to see what it can do. So it's a bunch of the better players of the club, a bunch of curious onlookers, and we're hitting the 917s, driver, fairway. And at the time I was hitting the Cobra King LTD, which is still one of my all-time favorite drivers. And it's one of the few. I haven't given away to somebody because someday I may want to play it again. And I put the Cobra King LTD on the launch monitor. And then I put the 917 different heads, different shaft options. I just could not get the spin down. I couldn't get it under 3,000. And it just was not competitive. And then I contrasted that with the Fairway Woods. And they were hot. Amazing. Awesome. I mean, I would have put them in the bag immediately if I played more fairway woods. But the driver was just a non-starter. And so when Buzz started kind of coming about with the, the new Titleist drivers for, for 2019 in this two-year process that they do, the TS project, so TS2 and TS3, I, I was kind of skeptical because, I mean, really, Titleist doesn't make great drivers, right? I mean... They kind of make spinny drivers, and they don't go very far. And, like, I'm playing guys playing them because they're under contract, but other guys just would, would not bother. And so I wanted to try them for myself. And so Kevin Taylor had uh, all the fitting cart, all the stuff ready. So I went over to my club and put them on my launch monitor. I wanted to see how they were. Were they competitive? Were they great? Were they bad? Were they spinny? What was it? They're awesome. They're legitimately amazing. I have never enjoyed hitting a Titleist driver in at least the 2000s um, more than this one. And so what's the formula? What? Why is this working? Well, in part, Titleist finally committed to having 45 and a half inch off the rack drivers. That's, that's what you expect to get these days from a driver when you purchase it off the rack. Whatever shaft you wind up with, that's what you expect to get. And... That title has long been in the 44 and a half, 45 range. So they were shorter off the bat. They were going to lose because you had a shorter shaft. You just didn't have the ability to kind of generate the type of ball speed because you couldn't generate the type of swing speed to get that kind of set of launch conditions that would win against the other major manufacturers. So that was one thing. They committed to doing that. Second, they figured out how to make this product all out of titanium. So they got away from the idea of using carbon fiber. That is obviously a very popular thing right now. And you can deliver really strong ball speeds with it. We see it in other major manufacturers. But for the, the Titleist folks, they realized for them, in their design, a 20% reduction in the size of the crown, so from 0.5 millimeters to 0.4 millimeters, and then attaching that to the whole body was worth it because they kind of saved on welding weight. So when you're welding a titanium face, or a face insert, or the full body to a carbon fiber crown, there's still plenty of weight that you don't see. It's kind of hidden in the welding process underneath, inside the hollow part of the club. And so there's weight there that just naturally comes about by welding to different materials together. And so what Titleist realized was we could save more weight by going ahead and thinning out a titanium crown and welding it to more titanium, keeping it all together, instead of trying to have uh, two different materials coming together. So that allowed them to save some weight, drop it lower, and go ahead and create a product that weighs less in terms of crown weight and brings it where it needs to be, low, low and back, uh, depending on the, the TS2 or the TS3. So the TS, TS2 difference is the TS2 is kind of shaped like a, a modern driver tends to be. It has a wider profile from front to back, has a little bit shallower of a face, so a little bit lower profile, so you're going to tee it a little bit lower. The TS2 also doesn't have any kind of adjustable center of gravity, so sure fit is not there for the center of gravity, and it just has a single weight in the back. You can change that weight with a kit, but 
you're, you're not changing weights all over the place on the sole. TS3 is a little bit more, slightly more compact in shape, and it's, they're both 460 cc heads, but you have a little bit deeper of a face, so a little bit less as far back, but the, the kind of sloping from that deeper face to the back is a little bit more traditional pear shape, so to speak. And so you tee that up a little bit higher. You also have the benefit of SureFit CG down at the bottom. One thing that's kind of a hidden benefit of the TS3 is they have deeply improved the SureFit CG. So the old CG, you kind of screw out the port, you would take it out, it kind of all kinds of weird adjustments. It wasn't very easy to use. It wasn't very good. The new one, you pull it out, it's a single unit, and it's held together by magnets. And so if you just flip it over, you can have draw or fade bias, depending on where you want to move the weights, or you can just keep it totally neutral. And all you have to do to move those weights is just unlock the magnet, flip it over to the other side, or vice versa, and then just play with the orientation of it. It's much easier. It's much better. I know not a lot of people are going to talk about it because most people don't mess with it, but it's, it's an engineering achievement. It's worth mentioning. And so you have these two products, ultimately. They both have the SureFit Hosel, 16 different Lion Loft adjustments, all independent. And you kind of put them against one another. And ultimately, it kind of comes down to whether you want something that's supposed to be a little bit higher launch and lower spin in the TS2, or you want something that's a little bit more mid-launch and still low spin in the TS3. Uh, I hooked up the TS2, the TS3, and my gamer to my launch monitor. I tried different variations. So I tried with the 45.5 inch stock shaft. I used uh, Hazardous Black. Uh, used that in a stiff and a 60 gram in the TS2 and the TS3. I uh, went to a 44 inch shaft just to kind of see dispersion or anything with the TS2 and TS3. And so got a variety of different numbers on the launch monitor, but the kind of pure data when it comes down to it between the TS2 and TS3, they're a little, I mean, they're pretty comparable. They're, they're not, it comes more down to launch conditions than anything else. I like the sound and feel of the TS3 more than the TS2, and that, that's what I thought would happen. But the performance, the distance was a little bit more for me with the TS2 than the TS3. So when I was hitting the TS2 in the 45 and a half inch shaft at my best, it was carrying... 276 to 281. That is a five to seven yard improvement over my gamer, where I can carry it 271 to 275 or so when I'm hitting it. Now I'm extremely accurate with my my gamer driver. The Cobra King F8 Plus has been amazing this year. It's been one of the best driving seasons of my life. And then when I put in the TPT golf shaft with it that I got custom fit for at Club Champion, I don't miss very often. Um, I'm not as long with it as compared to the, this, the, you know, the TS2 and TS3, but it's, um, it's a good driver. The TS2 and TS3 are a little bit longer. They, they launch a little bit lower. So the TS2 is actually supposed to launch kind of high, a little bit higher. I, I wasn't launching that much higher, to be honest with you. I was launching a little bit lower. And then with the TS3, I actually launched a little bit higher. I'm not sure why it all worked out that way. It might have been that I took a lot of swings. might have been that I was a little bit tired. But to be truthful, I, I was hitting the TS2 and 3 before we started filming the review just to kind of get a feel for what it was going to be like, whether I would enjoy it, what my initial impressions were, and then came back later and did the filming and the launch monitor work. So at the tail end of the session, these are where these numbers are coming from. Again, still... You know, a handful, a half dozen, maybe eight yards longer because of an increase in ball speed. My swing speed didn't change at all. Uh, the, the launch was about comparable. Again, a little bit lower. The spin was a little bit lower. Not drastically lower. A couple hundred RPM, maybe one, one to 200 RPM. But the ball speed was awesome. But again, gaining multiple miles per hour in ball speed without gaining all that much in swing speed, hardly any noticeable difference, better launch conditions, better spin, better ball speed. It's going to lead to more distance. And, and that makes Titleist competitive. Um, dispersion has to work out for you, of course. Everyone's results are a little bit different. But what I saw, I was impressed with. And I would be willing to look at Titleist as a driver in my bag again. That is not something I think I've said maybe ever. Uh, certainly not 
since I became an adult and was able to purchase or obtain golf clubs on my own. So kudos to the folks at Titleist for coming up with two very good products that are competitive that will make you think about putting a Titleist driver in your bag again. We'll probably come back and do a, a separate review on the Ferrari Woods just because they're their own kind of demon and they've also been extremely competitive in the past, the Titleist. So you might not be as surprised by the results and we may not be as surprised by the results if their fairway woods are competitive compared to others in the marketplace. But till then, please give us a follow on social media. I'm available at, on Twitter at Ryan Ballingy, and we can follow Golf News Net on your favorite social media service at Golf News Net. And we will see you next time.